everyone, it's Jenanine. Welcome back to my channel, The Story Ain't Over. So today I'm coming to you with another tier ranking book recs video. I am filming this before I've put up the fantasy one, so I don't know how you guys reacted to that, but I'm filming a YA contemporary book recs video anyways, and I'm gonna tier rank all the books that I'm recommending today. So I really hope you guys enjoy this, and let's just get into the madness. All right, so I have my laptop here, and I'm gonna tier rank as we go. So like last time, I made my own tiers, but the tiers are a little bit different this time for the contemporary books that I like because I feel like I have different categories in my brain for different genres and different types of books that I like. So I went a little bit more traditional with the contemporary book recs because I feel like I have very strong feelings about specific fantasy books and a lot of them are series so there's really big nostalgia value for those ones but with my contemporary book recs I do feel that a lot of these are recent faves a lot of these are ones that I read in the past couple of years and so I don't have a long-term commitment to them or love for them but I did really love and enjoy them and I do want to recommend them to you guys today so the tiers are a little bit different so you'll see I have like only six tiers which is a huge difference from like the nine or like ten I had for fantasy but regardless we have god tier at the top makes my heart ache tier great tier solid tier not my fave but good tier and just okay cute tier once again this is a recommendation video so basically all of the books on this video are ones that i actually like and i want you to read so there's not necessarily a trash tier for this because i don't feel like any of these are like super trash like the worst i can say about any of them is that they're just okay or they were cute but kind of trashy so they're just on the bottom tier so regardless, we're just gonna go so you can see all of the books here. There's a whole shit ton of them because, well, these are contemporary, so they're mostly standalones, so I can't just put like the first book of a series to stand in for like the rest of them. Uh, so I'm just gonna go and start with the one at the bottom because I don't wanna start with a very large expansive C because I feel like a lot of you know where that's going. So we're gonna start with, with The Fire on High. This one is a really good one and I think I'm gonna just put it on great tier it's not like one of my all-time favorites but I do think it's an amazing book and I really love the main character her name's Imani Santiago she is an Afro-Latina girl she is a girl who got pregnant in her 10th grade of high school and is raising her young daughter and she's just kind of going through high school life and falling in love and trying to figure out what she wants to do with her future and trying to balance that with the fact that she needs to care for her daughter and I think she's just one of the most mature YA heroines I've ever read and I love her so definitely recommend that one the next one is when dimple met rishi which i absolutely love it was so important to me because it was the first time i saw like a YA contemporary that featured like a south asian main character like one that was like really popular because that book actually got pretty popular but yeah it's this like arranged marriage type situation where dimple's parents and rishi's parents kind of set them up to go to the same summer camp for like app developers so dimple's very focused on her career and Rishi is kind of like a hopeless romantic and really wants to get Dimple to fall for him so they both end up at this camp and sparks kind of fly but they're both kind of juggling their own perspectives and career goals and that kind of complicates things but it's a great adorable YA romance so definitely recommend and I think this one also goes on a great tier for me I really liked it next book is Turtles All the Way Down by John Green and not gonna lie this is gonna go on makes my heart ache tier or maybe even yeah it's not quite god tier for me but it is honestly one of my favorite books ever in terms of contemporary just because i felt it was so well written i thought that it was one of john green's best books and it was the most personal of his books i feel like it is a book about mental illness and ocd and anxiety the main character suffers from those mental illnesses and she's kind of grappling with them throughout the course of the book so yeah definitely definitely love it i don't know I kind of feel like it's god tier too. I don't know. I think I'm gonna like see where my other books end up and then maybe I'll move it to god tier because I just don't want to have too many on god tier because, well, it's god tier. Anyways, next book is To All the Boys I Loved Before. I'm gonna put this on. Ooh, this is so hard because this is one of those series where it's like really cute. But, like, it's not one of my favorites. Like, I don't think it's amazing. I do love the movie, but I do think the movie is better than the book. So, oh, this is so hard. I think I'm gonna put this on, like, not my fave, but good tier. Like, I really enjoyed it, but I wouldn't go back and reread it again. The next one is This Time Will Be Different 
by Misa Sugiura. I really liked that book. It follows her main character, CJ, who is a Japanese American girl. She lives with her mother and her aunt. Her aunt owns like a flower shop and she's always like loved the flower shop and like doing flower arrangements but her mother wants her to have like an actual ambition and career that she approves of but CJ has never really had a strong ambition but when the flower shop is kind of in trouble and her mother kind of wants to shut it down CJ kind of has to step up and like take a stand and then there's also a bit of like activism involved and a bit of history involved it was really interesting in that way um and there's also like an alternate timeline in that book as well and a cute romance as well it wasn't one of my favorites though, so I'm gonna put it on solid tier, I think. Like, I don't think I loved it as much as with The Fire on High, but I did really like it. Next one is They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera, and this one, honestly, I think it's gonna go on to make my heartache tier because, well, it's a sad book. Not completely sad, but like, pretty sad at some points, but I honestly just really love the two main characters, Mateo and Rufus, and this is like an alternate version of reality where there's this thing called a death cast which basically calls you the day you're gonna die and lets you know you're gonna die within 24 hours, and so these two get the call, and they end up on this app called the Last Friend app where you can find someone to spend your last day with who is also going to die, and you can just kind of chill and hang out kind of thing on your last day and kind of relate to someone who's also going to die. So the two of them end up meeting and there's a romance involved but it's like they're both gonna die at the end and I loved it. The next one is The Poet X which is definitely going on makes my heart ache tear. It is an amazing, amazing book. It is written in verse, it follows an Afro-Latina main character, and she loves to write poetry, and poetry is kind of her passion. She ends up in like a spoken word club at her school, but she's also kind of fighting against the expectations that her mother has for her, and it's like a really interesting and fraught relationship, and it was just so well explored, and I loved it. It also has like a pretty strong like feminist tinge to it, I would say, in the sense that the main character, Ziomar, is really grappling with what it means to be a woman and a young woman and the difficulties that arise with that identity. The next one is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas and honestly this one is like not one of my personal favorites but I do think it's an amazing book so I'm gonna put it on a great tier. It's also a really important book as well and I think it's just impact has just been amazing so yeah I'm gonna put it there. Next one is The Sun is Also a Star which I have to put in a makes my heart ache tier. Oh my god there's gonna be like a thousand books there but I love this book. It follows her two main characters, Natasha and Daniel. Natasha is Jamaican American and Daniel is Korean American and Natasha's family is like 12 hours or like 24 hours away from getting deported back to Jamaica and so she's trying to find a way to keep them in America when she runs into Daniel on the street and Daniel is like uh, going off to an interview I think for a university or something and he's kind of chafing under his Korean parents expectations and the two of them end up in this like unlikely you know one day romance type of thing and it is just so freaking cute but also has like so much weight to it and I loved it. It is an amazing adorable contemporary and so so sweet so yeah one of my all-time faves. The next one is The Statistical Probability of Love at First Sight which is actually a book I read so long ago. It's a Jennifer E. Smith book and I love all of her contemporaries they're just so adorable but they're never like amazing if you know what I mean like they never leave like a super long lasting impact on me but I just think like when I'm reading them they're adorable I love them they're cute so I'm gonna put this on like just okay cute tier like I don't hate it but like it's just decent and cute and it fulfills its purpose. The next one is Somewhere Only We Know which is by Maureen Gu I believe and this one I'm gonna put in not my fave but good tier. I did enjoy this. I thought it was really cute. It follows a K-pop star while she's in Hong Kong before she's gonna like do her big American debut. And then the other main character is kind of like a tabloid writer. He is in high school but he's doing like a side hustle and he also does like photography as well uh, and he is doing the side hustle of tabloid photography and he ends up kind of running into this K-pop star Lucky and sees the opportunity for a story while he's living in Hong Kong and so they end up up, like kind of chilling together for like a few days and he is using her basically for his story but things get complicated when they start to fall for each other and she is kind of hanging out with them because she just wants to be free of her like really restricted life. It was really really cute. I just don't think it was like my favorite. It was a lot of fun. There was like a lot of good examination of like K-pop industry and also just being Asian American because both of them are actually from America I think or Canada but she is like living in Korea now as a K-pop star and he is living in Hong Kong right now because his parents are working there or something. So it was really interesting in that way. It just wasn't like my super fave. Yeah. Next one is 
this there's something about sweetie by sandia menon which i really really loved i think this one's gonna also go in great tier because i thought it was just so adorable and i love the two main characters they were just so so sweet and also very different and it also had some really great fat rep and body positivity which was so awesome but the romance was just so adorable and had a really lovely message of like accepting yourself as you are yeah super super cute and i also just love a shish the like main male character because he's such like a playboy but like he wants to find the right girl in this book and he's kind of like reeling from a breakup and it's just adorable altogether. so yeah i loved it super cute next one is simon versus the homo sapiens agenda to be honest this is not my favorite book i do think the romance between blue and simon is super cute and great and i loved the movie love simon but i do think this is another instance where i thought that the movie was better so it's not my favorite so i would probably put this in like not my fave but good tier i still think it's a great book i definitely recommend it the next one is permanent record by mary hk Choi. this book i love it so so much and i actually think i liked it more than her other book so i'm gonna put this oh i want to put this in great tier but i feel like i should put this in solid tier because while i love it i don't think it is actually no i'm gonna i'm gonna put it in great tier i'm gonna put it in great tier I personally really, really liked it, so that's why I'm just gonna put it there. I do think it has its flaws, but I thought it was a great book overall. It follows this like really big Instagram and like pop star, and then the main male character is kind of struggling with what to do with his life. He is working in like this bodega at nights, and he doesn't know what he wants to do with his life. And he has a meeting this girl at like 5 a.m. in the bodega that he's working at, and they end up in this like whirlwind romance. But it really talked about like ambition and kind of finding what you want to do with your life and i thought it was just a really interesting uh, book it also takes place in new york and i felt like it had a really nice atmosphere to it so yeah i generally just really enjoyed it and i can't really pinpoint what it was about it that i loved but it's going there next one is perks of being a wallflower by stephen chavosky and i can just say that put this here without really thinking about it it goes in god tier this is like one of those books i read us so long ago it's been like eight years oh my god it's been eight years since i read this i read this when i was in like grade nine i think of high school and it was one of those books that just like hit me at my core it encapsulated everything i was feeling but also was just so well written and i also just think it had such a lasting impact like i definitely think it's like a, a book that could like withstand the test of time kind of thing it basically follows our main character charlie he is starting his first year of high school he is reeling from the impact of his best friend's death who um committed suicide just before charlie started in high school and the book is told completely in letters that charlie is writing to a anonymous friend so he just writes a dear friend and then he writes his letter and tells the friend about his day and what's going on and you're not really given hints about who the friend is and it's just a wonderful wonderful contemporary book and i i love it so much it has a bit a few trigger warnings though so be careful of that but great book i love it it just will forever live on in my heart Next one is Opposite of Always by Justin A. Reynolds. This one was a good book, but it honestly wasn't my fave. I'm gonna put it in Just Okay Cute tier just because it was very cute. It's about this boy who meets this girl and they kind of fall for each other, but she ends up in the situation where she dies basically and he gets taken back in time to kind of relive the time that they've been together and be together again and find a way to save her kind of thing, but also relive his life if he wanted to. And so he goes back in time like multiple times. And I think the thing I didn't like about it was that it was kind of repetitive, but I also felt like this boy was throwing away a lot of the other things in his life for this girl which is fine um but yeah i just i feel like i wanted it to go in a different way than it did but it's still a great book i know a lot of people who do love it and i think it was really adorable as well and the romance is just so cute like they were such a cute couple next one is on the come up i'm gonna be honest i did not love this as much as the hate she give so it's gonna go on solid tier i felt like i didn't agree with a lot of Bree's decisions but i understand why she made them so like in that way like it was totally fine it was just yeah i didn't i didn't like it as much as the hate you give i think i really fell in love with star's family in the hate you give but with on the come up i feel like it was so focused on just brie that i didn't really love it as much but i still loved like the rapping in it the music in it and it was really great in that way and like the impact of it so it was overall a great book i just wasn't my favorite okay the next one is nick and nora's infinite playlist and honestly i love this book so much it's going and makes my heart ache tear because 
I don't know what it is about this and like this type of romance where it's like over a single day or a single night and like two people kind of just find each other spontaneously. I love that trope and this is one of those things. It's about these two kids in New York who meet at night at like a um, show, like a music show, and Nick is like playing in a band and Nora's there and they end up faking being together to like trick his girlfriend or her boyfriend, like ex-boyfriend or something, and they end up in this whirlwind romance and it was honestly super cute and super quirky and weird and very contemporary and I loved it. I know a lot of people who don't really like that book but I personally love it and I've never seen the movie so I am not basing this any way off the movie at all. I just really like the book and it's a really short book, it's fun. That's the, exactly the kind of contemporary I love. Next one is Love From A To Z by S.K. Ali. This one is a amazing book. It's just honestly not one of my favorites. It's gonna go in great tier though because I do think it's, a, it's an amazing book and the representation in it, the internationalness of it, and also just the subject matter of it, it's just really well done. One of the characters has a medical condition that I can't remember the name of right now and both of the main characters are Muslim and the main female character does wear a hijab and she is kind of reeling from the racist and kind of Islamophobic nature of one of her teachers at her school and she gets suspended for kind of speaking up against him and so she ends up in Doha, Qatar where the main male character is kind of studying at an international school and they both end up meeting at the airport on the way to Doha, Qatar and kind of fall for each other while they're there and it was honestly a really cute romance, but I love the way that like very heavy topics were kind of dealt with in that book. I think I just got annoyed with the two characters and the way that they dealt with some things in like the latter half of the book, but otherwise great book. All right, next one is Looking for Alaska by uh, John Green. Not gonna lie, um, I think this one's just just okay. Looking for Alaska is n in no way cute. It's just okay. But it's still a good book. Like if you like John Green, if you like his style, I think you'll like it. So that's why I put it in this video. All right, next book is Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. And this one I don't even need to think about. It is God tier. It is an amazing book. It is about this young boy whose older brother is killed in a shooting and he wants to avenge his brother. He's always lived by these rules in his community where like you don't snitch, you always take revenge. And so he takes his brother's gun and is going down the elevator of his apartment building to go kill his brother's killer but for every level that he goes down he's visited by like a ghost or an apparition or kind of illusion of someone he loves who has died and they're kind of trying to talk him out of it and the whole book kind of takes place over like I think only like two minutes or something and it's told entirely in verse and Jason Reynolds poetry is just amazing and he also reads the audiobook for this so definitely recommend that god tier book next one's let me hear a rhyme by tiffany d jackson this is honestly um oh my god so hard i think this is like makes my heart ache tear because i honestly thought this was an amazing book it's about these three friends who have a friend named steph who's like an incredible rapper but when he dies unexpectedly they try to keep him alive through his music and end up getting the attention of a record company but they don't know what to do because they've been like acting like steph is alive and distributing his music as if he's still alive and so now someone wants to sign him and it becomes an issue and it's honestly a really interesting book and it's a bit of a mystery in there as well really great next one is i wish you all the best by Mason Deaver. This is a book with a non-binary main character and I thought it was really great for that representation but it honestly wasn't my favorite book. I didn't think the story overall was um that exciting and I felt like the romance could have been fleshed out more but I do think it was still like a really important book and like the parts with the main character kind of going to therapy. It's also an own voices book so um it comes from a place of like knowledge and that kind of thing so it was really well done. It's just it wasn't my favorite. Next one is Hello Girls. I really like this book. I think it's a solid tier book. I liked it way more than I expected to. It's about like these two girls who come from like a small town and dealing with the patriarchy and they decide to just kind of run away on a road trip and are also kind of running away from one of the girls' dad and they it, it gets wild. It gets wild on this road trip but I loved it. It's really fun kind of Thelma and Louise type situation. Next one is The Geography of You and Me by Jennifer E. Smith. Another good, cute Jennifer E. Smith book. Goes in bottom tier. It's about these two characters who end up in an elevator during like a blackout and have like this cute little meet cute and then they end up exchanging numbers or addresses or something and end up writing letters and keeping in contact while they both end up moving away to like different parts of the world and are constantly moving around and so they never have the chance to like really be in one place together for a long period of time but they have always kind of held on to 
what they felt about each other and um, it's really interesting and I, I liked it in that way. It was very cute. It was just like a decent cute fun contemporary romance. The next one is from Twinkle with Love by Sandhya Menon. This one is gonna go in not my fave but good tier. This is probably my least favorite of Sandhya Menon's books just because I felt like the main character was a lot more on the younger side and made decisions that were kind of infuriating. I thought it was cute still, the romance was still cute, but I do feel like the main character Twinkle was just kind of annoying but that's totally fine like she's in high school she is a young teenager angsty teenager and it was like totally realistic so that was great and there's also a lot of aspects about it that I really enjoyed she wants to be a filmmaker and so the book is actually told in like Twinkle's journal entries to female filmmakers that she admires so that was a really cool part about it next one is frankly in love by David Yoon and this one I without a doubt can put in God tier this is a book that I read last year I think when it came out and it just blew me away I related to it so very hard and I think that's why it is God tier for me it's about our main character Frank Lee who is a Korean American Boy. His parents are immigrants and he was born in America and he's dealing with their old style thinking and kind of the way that they can be racist and kind of prejudiced um, in some ways and that kind of manifests in his romantic relationships when he wants to date this white girl at his school but he knows his parents would never approve so he ends up fake dating one of his Korean American friends to kind of get his parents off his back so that he can secretly date this white girl and his Korean friend Joy I think is also dating like a non-Korean person but then the two of them kind of end up falling for each other. I don't think the romance is what is really the strong part of this book. I think it's really Frank's own personal journey, his relationship with his family and especially with his father is just so strong in this book and it is one of those books that really just hit me at my core. So yeah it is one of my all-time favorites. This is a contemporary that just really blew me away and I will continuously praise it to the heavens because I thought it was just amazing and I'm so excited to see what other things David Yoon is going to come up with because I honestly think he will be one of my favorite authors in the future. Next one is Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis. This is an amazing book and honestly this is going to go in great tier. It is kind of a feminist book and it is about a, it follows like multiple perspectives from like this very small town and it involves a murder mystery but it was kind of a wild crazy book and I can't really explain what it's about. I feel like it's one of those books that you really just need to dive into without knowing anything and you will probably love and enjoy. Next one's Fault in Our Stars by John Green. This is gonna go in not my fave but good tier. It's not my fave John Green book. I do think it is a good book though. I think it was well done. I loved the dynamic between the two main characters. I read this a really long time ago so I don't really remember much but I do think it was a fun book. If you like contemporary Contemporaries. If you like sad contemporaries, this is definitely the one to go for. Next one's Far From the Tree by Robin Benway. This one I'm gonna put in solid tier. It was honestly a really solid book. It follows three characters that are all like kind of half siblings. They all have the same mother, but they end up in like different families and in different places because their mother gave each one of them up for adoption. The book kind of starts with one of the characters, Grace. She is in high school, she got pregnant, and she had to give away her child. She didn't have to, but she wanted to, so she gives away her child, um, but she's kind of reeling from that impact, knowing that her own mother did the same when she was a baby. And so she decides that she kind of wants to track down her mother and track down her other siblings and see what her mother was thinking and kind of fill that hole in her after giving away her own child. Next one is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell and this is honestly one of my favorite books but I'm not gonna put it in God tier because I don't think it itself is like one of the best books ever, one of the best contemporaries that I've read. I do think it has its flaws but it is honestly one of my favorite books ever. Um, I think of it very fondly. It is probably more of like a nostalgia tier book um, if I had put a nostalgia tier and I feel like I should have now seeing how top heavy this tier ranking is but whatever. If all main character Kath, she's going off to university. She and her twin sister were really close when they were younger. They used to write fan fiction for this series called Simon Snow which is basically Harry Potter but when they are going off to college her sister says that she doesn't want a room with her and kind of wants to keep her distance and make her own friends and Kath is just like say what? Like huh? I have to like fend for myself? You don't want to be friends with me? Like she's just reeling from that and then there is a really cute romance that happens in this book. There there's a lot of fan fiction in this book. I really related to Kat's introvertedness, especially when I was younger. I was very similar to her. So that is one of the reasons why like it has a really big nostalgia value for me. But I also just loved it because of the romance in it and like how awkward and cute and funny it was. But also the relationship between the sisters. I have two older sisters, so I like really related in that aspect to the book. So yeah, one of my faves. And then the next one is Emergency Contact by Mary H.K. Choi. This one's probably gonna go in 
just okay cute tier I thought it was cute and it was fun and it was adorable and it was like awkward and funny but it honestly wasn't my fave I do think I expected more from it but I do think it was like a good book and it's a fun contemporary it follows these two characters in Austin Texas one is Sam and he's kind of struggling with money and his situation and what to do in life and he's working at this cafe and he wants to become a filmmaker but he doesn't know how to get there and then our other main character is in university and she is also kind of having similar struggles and the two of them end up in a weird little meet cute where they exchange numbers and become each other's kind of emergency contacts so they lean on each other in times of need and kind of fall for each other in the process. Next one's Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia and this one's definitely going in makes my heart ache tear. This is an amazing book, deals a lot with anxiety, it's about our main character who writes web comics and she has like this huge following but she's such an introverted person. She deals with a lot of anxiety and just the concept of revealing herself to her whole audience is just like terrifying to her but then there's also a really sweet like couple buffy boy that she kind of meets and ends up in a romance with and it's just super cute there's also this tension in the fact that he doesn't know that she's the creator of this web comic that he absolutely loves and it is honestly such a great book love it so very much and it, it goes to some dark places as well but it was really good next one's eleanor and park by rainbow rowell i put this in here it's not one of my faves so it's definitely going in not my fave but good tier but i do think it's a great book and i definitely recommend it just wasn't my fave and i don't really remember a lot about it but i do know a lot of people do love this book um and it has a really sweet romance and it takes place in the 80s i think next one's don't read the comments by eric smith i'm gonna put this in solid tier because i do think it was a great book it's about these two characters who are gamers and one of the characters Divya she is like this huge streaming gamer she's like this huge following but she's dealing with like these sexist racist trolls on the platform and so it really deals with that aspect in the book and I thought it was just really awesome like the main character was just so kick butt and was such a badass character and the boy is such a like soft hufflepuffy boy and I loved it it was just a adorable little romance and also just really great in the aspect that it like talked about the difficulties of being a female gamer. Next one is Dear Martin by Nick Stone. This one's gonna go in a great tier. I love this. This is an amazing book. This is one of those books that's written very sparsely but really well done. Definitely recommend. And there's also a sequel coming out this year so I'm really excited about that. Next is Dash and Lily's Book of Dares also by the same authors of Nick and Nora's Implement Playlist. This one I'm gonna put in Mm, solid tier. It does have its issues but I do really love it. It is like the perfect Christmas book for book lovers. It starts with Lily who leaves this like a little journal in a bookstore with a dare and whoever kind of picks it up has to fulfill the dare and then leave it in a different place with another dare in return. And so Dash ends up being the one who picks it up and the two of them kind of exchange these dares throughout the Christmas break and keep like moving this journal around New York City and it was just honestly a wonderful little book. It's also really short. It's co-written by two authors. Loved it. It's an adorable romance. Next one is American Panda by Gloria Chow. This one is probably gonna go in solid tier. It's also a great book. It wasn't like one of my all-time favorites but it had such an amazing representation for Taiwanese Americans because it was so varied in all the experiences because it's not only the main character's experience of being Taiwanese American but also like her friends and like cousins and how the experience varies and I loved that representation but I also loved the relationship between the main character and her mother. It was this really fraught like tense relationship but they really do love and care for each other it was just very complicated and i loved that and then the last book is of course a very large expansive sea by tara mafi and this one is definitely going in god tier for me for those of you who have been following my channel for a while you know that this is like one of my favorite books of all time i love it so very much i have like a 45 minute book talk for this because i loved it that much it was a book that i read like in a single day i think and it blew me away i loved tara mafi's writing in this book and it follows a 16 year old muslim girl living in america a year after 9 11 and she's kind of dealing with the racism and islamophobia and she ends up falling for a white boy at her school and Tara Mafi uses this relationship as a way of talking about bigger, larger issues that are going on in America at that time and it was honestly just so amazing and I loved the romance in it. It was very cute and it's just a really like well-written book and I think it has a lot of literary value as well. So yeah, definitely got here for me. This is really interesting because I did not expect this to end up this way but there's also a lot of books on this 
list. So that's what all I got. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and watching me tier rank my contemporary book Rex. I really hope that you guys found at least one or two books that you really want to pick up soon. All of these are wonderful, amazing books and I definitely, definitely recommend them. But do leave me a comment down below and let me know which books you like the most and also let me know your outrage over my tier ranking because I'm sure a lot of you disagree with some of these and that's totally fine. But yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts. But thank you so, so much for watching. I will see you in my next video and please remember that this story ain't over. Bye! Bye.